Hello. I can't believe that summer is almost over. We've been so busy, it seems like it's just flown by. We just finished our summer youth workshops in person at the theater with everyone masked and social distancing. 39 students total taking classes in acting, musical theater, stage combat, makeup, costume design, dance, and so much more. We're already busy prepping for the fall classes starting September 20th, so watch our website for details. We just painted the dressing rooms and backstage bathrooms. We're taking care of much needed electrical projects like the new entry lights out front. And we're in the final selection of our 2022 season. And we're all hard at work preparing to open our doors this fall with a youth musical and our new works festival. More on that in a moment. First, I wanted to let you know that we've had a couple changes in our officers. I'd like to welcome Nico Montalibano as our new VP of Marketing and Marai Buthong as our new VP of Production. So glad to have them on the executive committee. They've already rolled up their sleeves and are hard at work getting ready for all we have planned for the rest of 2021. We have two more community discussions this year. Our next one is Aging in Theater. It'll be Thursday, August 26th at 8 p.m. And if you missed our fascinating conversation Queering the Space, Gender Expression in Theater and Film, you can watch it on our YouTube channel, along with all our community discussions. Now, let's talk about opening our doors. Need a good reason to be vaccinated? Well, we'd love to have you in our theater this September when we present five weekends of new works. But to join us in these seats, we're gonna need to see your vaccination card. We're looking at other options for those of you who are not vaccinated. Our New Works Festival runs for five weekends starting September 24th with a new show or two one X each weekend with minimal sets and costumes. So the script is the star. And because this is a chance for these playwrights to have their work on our stage, admission will be by donation. We'll be announcing the selected shows shortly, but at the moment we're looking for producers and directors for each show. If you're interested, please go to the link on our webpage. Now, to tell us a little bit more about the festival, I'd like to introduce the executive producer, Marai Buthong, and our dramaturg, Melanie Anthony. By the way, we're doing this interview in separate locations due to the COVID mask mandates. Hi, Marai. Hi, Melanie. Hi. Marai, I'm going to start with you. When we decided to do a New Works Festival uh, and asked for submissions, what was the criteria we asked of the playwrights? So we kept it very open because this is our first festival and uh, we wanted to just open it to as many new voices as possible. Um, so we asked for one act that would be 45 minutes to an hour, full length plays that would be 90 minutes plus, and we asked for there to be no more than six actors and for the, the work to be previously unproduced. And that was it. We had 97 submissions, which is spectacular. Uh, what was your process for going through the scripts in a fair and thorough way? Um, they all came to me first and I downloaded all the PDFs and redacted all the playwright names from the scripts as well as the file name. And then I uploaded them back to randomly assign them to our committee of readers uh, so that they wouldn't know who the playwright was in case there was any personal connection. Um, from there, all our readers read the plays and then uh, responded to them. Um, and Melanie created a wonderful reader response form that we were able to use to make the, the shortlist. Melanie was able to do that because she's a dramaturg. How did you find your way to the Morgan Wixon, Melanie? You're new to our theater, right? I am, and I'm thrilled to be here. Thank you, Michael. And thank you, Mariah, for the opportunity. I have grown up in the area and know of the theater and its reputation. How I came to this was I was coming from a fellowship at the Kennedy Center, and one of the big topics for dramaturgs was how to be part of your community, how to make a difference during these particular times. So I went on social media and started looking in my community, and there was the New Works Festival just popped right up. I read it carefully, I read the mission, I toured the website, and I thought this would be a great way to be involved, and I reached out, and you were kind enough to bring me in. Well, we are so lucky. I was gonna say, we love having you. 
uh, besides making this form for the committees to use, in a nutshell, for those who don't know, what is your job as a dramaturg? Like, uh, how are you helping the readers through this process? So developing the reader response form was an important first step because it really leveled the playing field and gave a lot of variety and depth to how people could respond, which then we could categorize and collate really easily and then have very good detailed discussions from that point. So I evaluate the plays individually and then I help facilitate the grouping of looking at these individual works as for what could work as a slate and a season. And I advocate as an audience member. And I look at that point of view, uh, given our mission for this festival. And I contribute to the detailed discussions we have about the plays, because those will end up translating into discussions with our chosen playwrights as we move forward into production dramaturgy. And what will your job be during the production process? So production dramaturg is the bridge and the thought partner and part of the artistic team with all the various artists who work on the creation of the play. We ask questions, we answer questions, we provide clarity, we provide bridges and advocates and act as advocates um, amongst all the people who are part of the artistic process to do whatever is necessary to help build a successful production. Well, I am really, really excited. Mariah, what kind of scripts have you received from these playwrights so far? Of our submissions, 33% were one act, 66% were full length plays. We've definitely had more drama than comedy, um, but I would say the majority are somewhere in between uh, some form of dramedy. And the majority of our submissions are local playwrights. That is super exciting to me. Um, only 14 of the submissions came from playwrights outside of Southern California. Melanie? Everything she said, and I loved how the writers had stories to tell that were from ancestral history, human history, recent history, and the present day. And I loved how they could pull out ideas that will challenge our audiences and engage them and entertain them using real human drama and being and, and, and humanity, which you get through comedy and real life, real lived experiences. So I thought that was all really authentic and lovely. I'm so glad we got to chat with the both of you. Uh, before we close, let me ask, what's the next step in your process? So the next step is for us on this side, we have to get a slate down from our short list, um, which is involving a lot of discussion within the committee. I thank you so very much. And we will talk to you again in the near future. Thank you, Michael. Don't forget to check our website if you're interested in directing or producing one of these shows. Actor auditions will be August 21st and 22nd. Check our website for the details. After the New Works Festival closes, we'll be presenting our 25th annual Youth Musical. This year's show is Little Women. Auditions are August 28th and 29th. You can check out our website for all the details. Members, mark your calendar. We're having our next member gathering and bylaws amendment vote on Sunday, September 19th. More details to come, but please plan to join us. If you're not already a member, you can join by going to the link near the bottom of our website. I have just enough time for a little more about our 75 year history. Regarded as one of the finest little theaters in Southern California, the Morgan Theater had grown to become an important theatrical venue in Santa Monica, being reviewed and talked about in numerous local papers throughout the Los Angeles area. It had become a training ground for young actors and was a springboard for several film and television stars in the making. Its distinguished patrons included Betty Davis, Charles Lawton, Dorothy McGuire, and many other stars. By 1960, the Guild had celebrated 11 years of theater, produced more than 140 shows, and their reputation had spread across Southern California. Even Hollywood filmmakers were knocking on the door. Like MGM dialogue coach Harold Clifton, who directed several shows for the Morgan Theater. Set builders and costume designers from Hollywood also built sets and costumes for the Morgan Theater. On December 15th of 1962, the Guild held their annual Christmas party where they handed out the Jeffrey Awards for Excellence, and they took this photo out front of the theater. It's one of the only photos we have of the exterior of the old Morgan Theater. The day after Christmas, eight members of the Guild rehearsed their next show entitled Critical Choice. At 10 p.m., the director and newly elected president, Ray Verity, 
and the cast members into the rehearsal and left the theater. 20 minutes later, the building was up in flames. It took three engine companies two and a half hours to put out the blaze. It was a total loss. It wasn't until 1.05 a.m. that the fire was even declared under control. Only the exterior walls of the building stood. The interior was gutted. The fire started in the costume shop. The cause of the disastrous fire was deemed to be careless cigarette smoking, although no one was ever charged. The remains of the building would need to be torn down. But this did not detour the members of the guild, who declared that the show would go on, and members got to work. Within three days of the fire, the guild held an emergency meeting. Plans were made to begin the search for a new permanent home, and the raising of funds began almost immediately. Grace Godino took on the incredible job of fundraising. Mel Wixon and Bob Webster chaired the building committee. In fact, they got an anonymous donation of $1,000 that very next week. Newly elected president of the board, Ray Verity, arranged for a temporary location for his show. The newspaper said that he kept his loyal cast together, diligently rehearsing in living rooms, telephone booths, and swimming pools. Don't always believe what you read. <laughs> Critical Choice opened at John Adams Junior High School and with borrowed sets and costumes. Heading up the fundraising efforts, Grace had many plans for the raising of money needed to purchase a new location. The search for a new permanent home began and over the next five months, thanks to the tireless efforts of Grace and the volunteer members, they raised $50,000 necessary to acquire a piece of land at 2627 Pico Boulevard, where a home and barbershop had stood. Escrow closed on July 26, 1963. The entire community and surrounding areas pitched in. The Mariners Club donated money, State Mutual Savings and Loan made a donation, as did Santa Monica Bank. Billboards were put up in Santa Monica and the West Side asking for help to build the new Morgan Theater. Everyone got involved. There were rummage sales and box lunches, afternoon teas, and a silent auction at the Surf Rider. And an auxiliary of the Guild was formed and called Friends of the Morgan Theater, which held events to raise money. Members of the drama class from Hawthorne High School did a benefit of Bernadine in July of 1963, here in a publicity photo on the newly purchased property. And even other theaters contributed portions of their box office to the building campaign. The Guild created an honorary board of directors that included city council members from Santa Monica, members of the Chamber of Commerce, the president of Santa Monica Bank, and actor Brian Keith. The Guild hired architect David Tennyson Rich and contractor Manny Carbajal and announced that the new theater would be built and opened in a year and a half by the fall of 1964. <laughs> Demolition on the site began August of 1963. Ground on the new theater was broken a month later on September 14th with much fanfare. A commemorative shovel ceremony the Anderson Highlanders of Lakewood provided bagpipe tunes, and there was a raffle where Mel Wixon won $1,000 prize, then turned around and donated it back to the Guild. Meanwhile, the Guild continued to produce a limited number of shows, performed at Barnum Hall in Santa Monica High School, the Santa Monica Civic Auditorium, Hollywood Center Theater, Pacific Palisades Women's Club, and even the Blossom Room at the Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel. It was a time when everyone came together for a common goal and supported the Guild, supported local theater. But even with all the support and effort, raising that much money was difficult. We'll pick it up there next month. Until then, get vaccinated if you haven't, wear masks when asked, and plan to join us this fall when we reopen our doors. Links for everything are on our website. And, Watch for a special president's note when we announce the new festival play selections and our 2022 season. See you in September.